my little geeks. Um, I've been wanting to do this video for a while. And since I couldn't sleep, <laughs> like usual, and because I'm suffering from some health problems, I, uh, I decided to go ahead and just sit down and record it. Uh, I'm using the, the better camera on the back of my phone, which is why the, uh, why the picture is coming in better this time. And I actually have it on a little selfie stick. And so you may ask why in the world did I, you know, suddenly out of the blue decide to do it now, especially on like less than an hour's sleep for who knows how many days on end. Well, <clears throat> um, what's going on with me currently physical health wise is that my body has decided that it's allergic to all known antibiotics and I've been suffering from a nose and throat infection. I, I got one last year and it's come back. Thankfully it's nowhere near as bad as last year, but it's still pretty bad and uh, it's, it's just growing. And not only that, but I have four wisdom teeth that, uh, you know, I never got removed and now they're starting to get infected because, you know, they're rotting away. And I never thought that that would happen since, you know, I, for a good while there, I, I had really good tooth hygiene. I never expected, I never expected my life to go the way it did, but, uh, but all of this looming me in the face, um, and with death rather seeming imminent, I, I decided to just sit down and just do this. So this is basically my backstory. And uh, you can listen to it like a podcast because there really isn't, there's, there's not going to be anything to see you know, visually. Uh, so yeah, uh, I, I'm also just get right into it. So let me see here. Uh, I, I started my little timer there just to give myself, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to cut it off at about 20 minutes. So this video is probably going to be about 25 minutes long at the most. Um, so I was born up north of Minnesota. I'm 40 years old. Uh, as of this year, 2020, I'm, I'm 40. And I almost didn't make it to this age. Uh, and some of the things that happened before... I, I've had many near-death experiences in my life simply because I've had such horrific health. Uh, when I was young, I got what was misdiagnosed as IBS, irritable, irritable bowel syndrome. No one wanted to admit uh, when I was, what was I? I think I was 11, 10. I was either 10 years old or 11 years old when I got hit with horrific bowel trouble. And what it was, was just, it was diarrhea. And, and I nearly died from it many times over throughout my life. And, you know, I'm sorry if this is rather graphic. I'm you know, I'm, I'm rather an open book. I'm Asperger's, so I don't really understand what to hold back and what to let out. So uh, uh, my apologies to anyone that's listening. But what ended up happening was that I was misdiagnosed uh, when I was, you know, when when I finally managed to get my parents to bring me, bring me to a doctor that was actually took my concerns credibly and didn't write me off as not wanting to uh, go to school. Uh, I finally managed to get to a gastroenterologist and they they properly diagnosed my stomach issues, but they never diagnosed my gut issues. But maybe that was because I never wanted my gut scoped. <laughs> uh, so it turns out that I actually had, I think it was Crohn's disease. And what ended up happening is that that Crohn's disease ended up advancing into what was gut cancer and it ended up advancing and, and anyone that has Crohn's disease knows that, you know, usually it, it ends with kidney failure, you know, kidney cancer. At least that's what I read, you know, 
I was, I was going to school to be a nurse, and that's what I read in the medical books and whatnot. Um, so, but at the time when I was actually taking nursing in college, I, far as I know, I still had IBS. I didn't know that I had undiagnosed Crohn's disease. I didn't know that, uh, you know, of course, when all the signs and symptoms of, of cancer started popping up, I, you know, I got worried and I tried to tell the one or two doctors that I could actually go to. Believe it or not, I was in college and I didn't have any money at all. I was going on a Pell Grant to the best of my ability and I was doing everything I could to make ends meet and, and it just wasn't working. And, uh, you know, I didn't have insurance, you know, and I didn't have any money to go to the doctor. And so the one or two times that I actually managed to get myself to the doctor because I was just that bad off, uh, the doctors wrote me off, literally. They just, you know, they did not care. They did not care at all. And apparently that's a major problem with, with being a woman, just period, the world over, not just, not just in America. You figure that America would be better in the line of that, but it's not. It's terribly not. I, I'd like to think that Canada would be better. I don't have any hope in, um, in England. I would hope that places like Finland and Sweden and, you know, all those northern areas, you know, nor Norway and whatnot would be better. But even that, I don't know. Uh, and this is getting kind of rambly. So, yeah, so, uh, so I've had many near-death experiences throughout my life. Uh, when I was younger, they were not good through all of them. And this is what I don't understand. I just want to preference this with uh, my parents, they got into AA when I was very young because they both came from alcoholic families and my dad ended up nearly losing his job because, you know, he was coming in drunk and finally the boss said that, you know, sat him down and said, listen, you can either lose the job or you can go to AA. So my dad said, well, I'll go to AA. My, my mom... Her father actually got that exact same warning, which is apparently rather common for men back in, you know, back in those days who had fought in World War II. My, my mom, you know, her father had fought in World War II. And when he was sat down by the boss, you know, at one of his, you know, places of work and told, you know, either go to AA, get some treatment in this. I don't think AA was around at that time, but he said, get some treatment or you lose the job. And her dad said, screw it. I'm losing the job. I, I don't need this. <laughs> when actually he did, he had five kids to feed. So my dad thankfully decided to go to AA and AA ended up leading into, you know, finding a church and finding actual Christianity. And my dad actually became a born again Christian. He actually has an incident, which is interesting because he's not a Christian now, but he had, you know, he actually had a bright white light hit him and all this spiritual stuff, which I never experienced with Christianity. But, uh, you know, my parents being Christian, they ended up raising me Christian. And so I've, I've been raised Christian since the age of five. I've been baptized with water, you know, in, in bathtubs and swimming pools over and over and over again. You know, my parents were part of, uh, what was it, Presbyterian. And then they ended up going evangelical, even though they still, they, ended, they still to this day claim to be Presbyterian. But they ended up going very evangelical. Um, I ended up going evangelical also, you know, very much, you know, not believing in, what is it? You know, we believe in creationism. We don't believe in... Oh, what is it? The Neanderthals, you know, the monkeys becoming people. You know, we, we don't believe in that. And um, and my whole life I've been, and this this might this might interest people. Um, you know, my life story. This is obviously going to be in several parts. This is part one. But I've been a Christian my whole life. I've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. I've fallen under, you know, the power of the Holy Spirit. I've spoken in tongues. I've been spiritually baptized in the Holy Spirit. I've been physically baptized and, 
you know, the Holy Spirit, you know, with, with water and everything. I've, I've accepted Jesus Christ into my heart. He's my Lord and Savior. I've accepted Jesus Christ into my heart over and over and over again. You know, I've, I've read the Bible. I've memorized passages of it. I've memorized Psalm 91 when I was a teenager uh, and actually a preteen. And I have believed very strongly in Jesus Christ. And I have believed very strongly that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. I believe very strongly in the Holy Spirit. I believe very strongly in, um, in God the Father. And I... I've believed all those things, and yet when I hit about 11, 10 or 11 years old, I started having horrific night terrors. Now I know that this could have very easily been uh, seizures, because I've been diagnosed with low-grade seizures now. Um, but it's very interesting because we believe in the power of Jesus Christ, of the Lord and Savior, and the Lord and Savior should be able to cure and heal miraculously problems such as seizures, problems such as, you know, neurological illnesses, problems such as physical illnesses. I, I've believed in Jesus Christ, and I believed in that my whole life. And so, you know, you shouldn't have to go to a doctor for anything. But I end up you know, basically living at a doctor's office because of my gut ailments. And, and none of the, none of the doctors took me seriously until one finally, you know, and interestingly enough, it was a female doctor. Her name was Dr. Kazwan. She ended up dying of a brain tumor, sadly and terribly. And I'm naming her because I, I love her so much. She's the one that sent me to another female doctor, a, uh, a gastroenterologist, a, uh, a Dr. Porter who actually I'd like to think saved my life because my, she ended up scoping me and she found out that my gut, you know, my stomach looked like raw hamburger. She said in all the, what, 30 years at that point she had practiced, she had only seen one other patient who was worse off than I was when she had scoped me. And here up until this point, my parents were sending me the counselors, believe it or not. They were, you know, having me, you know, laying on of hands of me, praying over me, you know, saying that I wasn't ill and that I just was trying to get out of school when I wasn't. I was actually dying of diarrhea and I was dying of stomach upset and all the prayer in the world, all the laying on of hands in the world was not curing me. It was not healing me. And so one of the most recent near-death experiences, it's not the, it's not the last near-death experience I had, but it's one of the most recent near-death experiences. It's one that I had in this house, believe it or not. Uh, I ended up, turns out that I also have uh, a blood ailment, which basically equals I don't have enough blood in my body. My, my body is low on far too many quarts of blood. I actually need more blood in my body. And uh, my bone marrow can't produce enough blood. And at least that's what I've been non-diagnosed with because uh, still no insurance and, you know, the, uh, my words are absolutely leaving me. That, that's another problem with all this, uh, being so sleep deprived and so ill, I, I can't remember uh, any, of, any of the words, any of the words that I studied in school, any of my medical terminology, it's really bothering me really bad. And I've had these brain farts for a while now, but the oncologist, sorry, the oncologist, he, basically he's, he's a blood doctor. He said he doesn't, he didn't work just in, um, cancer. Although, you know, being a blood doctor, that's what they usually use you for cancer treatment. Um, you know, I didn't have insurance and I didn't really have any way to pay, but so once again, he, he reframed from, you know, properly diagnosing me. And he said, well, you just have, you know, all the symptoms of basically leukemia, but you don't have leukemia, you know, and you just have really low blood count. So to this day, I'm still feeling sick. I'm still just lousy. Uh, but anyway, so that preferences the fact that I, I had this when I was in my early 20s, about 24, 25, when I ended up giving blood. And I didn't know that I had this blood problem back then. 
And so what ended up happening was that I gave blood at a local Votech that I was going to at the time because I wanted to be a graphic artist. I wanted to be a digital artist. And I decided that this is going to be my path and I was going to go on it no matter what. Obviously, I had never managed to do that. But uh, so what ended up happening was, and I'm going to try to put my phone down here because I'm holding it and it's rather hurting me. So sorry about the picture. It's going to go a little wonky. So, and sorry about any oddball noises that you're hearing because I don't know what the camera's catching in this. So what ended up happening was I, I ended up giving blood and they took a full pint of blood. One full pint, yeah. And with a massive needle. And I got a huge goose egg on my arm. Absolutely terrible. And I ended up having to go back into the nurse and she ended up really angry with me and rewrapping it. She's like, now don't take that off your arm. I ended up feeling very faint and I drove home and I realized now I never should have driven home. But I drove home because, you know, it's not like, you know, my family has been always very abusive and, and especially to me and uh, my younger brother. We, we call him my little brother, even though he's six foot three, but <laughs> which is kind of funny because he's, he's not little anymore. He's far from little. He's in his thirties and he's six foot three and yet we still call him my little brother, so... But yeah, this family had, they completely ignored my middle sister and they they took all their abuse out on me. And then my younger brother, when we moved into this house, they man, they he ended up being able to hide out uh, in his bedroom. And since I didn't have a place in the house since I was supposed to be moving out and I was planning on it, you know, it it was terrible. Anyway, I ended up driving home after giving blood and I ended up essentially passing out on my bed. And I only have five minutes to tell this because I'm trying to keep it under time. Um, so to cut a long story short, I ended up laying on my bed and darkness ended up closing in all around me. And the darkness itself ended up forming these demons. And I ended up hearing yells and screams and hollerings, constant and continuous, like usual, like all my other near-death experiences. And my soul felt like it was being ripped down to hell. And the darkness itself was forming itself into these demons with these really long fingered hands. And the fingers came to sharp points. It's like these nails grew on these hands and it was really long nailed, long fingered, long armed, you know, just horrific faced, kind of like the sharp pointy faces of like, uh, of like alien or something. I don't know. It there, It's so impossible to describe. There's no way to describe it. But I was, obviously it was terrifying me. I was absolutely horrified, you know, but, you know. Fear is just a fact of life, especially for me, especially when, you know, you're underemployed at that time or unemployed and um, you're just hanging on to life, you know, by the skin of your teeth and your parents are abusive and your family members are abusive to you because they taught, because, you know, the parents taught the kid that you're the deadbeat one. So, I mean, just fear has been a fact of life for me and... So anyway, I ended up laying on my bed and this darkness closed around me and it was forming itself into these beings. And for the first time ever, I actually heard female screaming. And I, to this day, I call them banshees. And they were sticking their claws into my body and they were clawing at me and they were trying to drag me down into hell. And this just, and, and it was just a cacophony of yelling, male yells, female yells, screaming, groaning, hollering. And for the first time ever, I got high-pitched screaming of the banshees. Uh, and they were all physically dragging me into hell. And I was screaming out to Jesus Christ, like I always do during these near-death experiences, Bill, you know, just hollering, hollering with all of my soul, not physically, but hollering with all of my mind, all of my 
heart, all of my soul, all of my core, all of my being for Jesus Christ to save me and just begging for God to save me. And not once did Jesus answer me. Not once did I get an angel from him. Not once did I get any comforting, any salvation, any rescue, any anything. I got absolutely nothing from him. All I got was more demonicness, in all seriousness. And, um, and since I'm about to hit my timer here, which is about to go off, I'm going to try to wrap this up. But yeah, that was, that was uh, one of my, you know, the second to the largest near-death experience that I can recall at this point in time. Uh, and that happened in this house that I'm recording this in. And, and it actually happened uh, in my bedroom. And it was, it was absolutely horrific. And to this day, I don't know why Jesus Christ doesn't answer me when I scream out to him. I don't know why he doesn't save my life when I'm dying. Because uh, I've had many near-death experiences, definitely when I was younger, uh, all throughout, you know, now looking back, all throughout my preteens, all throughout my teens, all throughout, you know, all throughout my 20s. And it doesn't matter how much I scream out to God, how much I scream out to Jesus Christ, he he never saves me while I'm dying. And I don't know why, because I'm a born-again Christian. I believe in Jesus Christ. I have Jesus Christ in my heart and in my soul. I'm, you know, I'm baptized in the Holy Spirit. I'm covered in the Holy Spirit. I'm covered in Jesus Christ's blood. All of my sins are covered in Jesus Christ's blood so that I should be presented as blameless before God the Father Almighty. And yet I was be yet I was being dragged to hell anyway. So why did that happen? Why was that happening? And what is going on? And my timer is going off. So that's my timer. And So yeah, that was that was one of my most recent near death experiences. Um, it happened uh, between the ages of twenty four and twenty seven, and uh, and I had another near death experience here very you know recently, if you want to call it that for me. And unlike everybody else's near-death experiences, mine have always been dark and there has been no reason for it. I have never learned anything from it. I've never been taught anything, uh, nothing. And, and I don't do drugs. I've never done drugs. I hate drugs, you know, because my body is so horrifically allergic to absolutely everything. I'm, I, I you know, you name it, I'm allergic to it. I, I don't, I can't go near anything. And I'm not about to go near any type of drugs at all. I, I hate going to the hospital because when you go to into the ER, the first thing they do is they put an IV in you. And I always get sick from just the water drip IV because they put chemicals in it. My body is a litmus test. So I, you know, I can't drink. Beer makes me throw up. And I found out that the reason beer makes me throw out, throw up is more than likely because it's flavored with hops, and hops is a cousin to pot. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I can't drink, I, I can't do drugs, M most of the food that I eat, you know, is real iffy, but the only thing I'm not allergic to is anything that, you know, it's like I, I can go outside in the woods without having trouble. You know, I can sniff grass, you know, and I mean, you know, the lawn after it's been mowed. I can smell that without sneezing. My dad has horrific allergies in the line of everything that he breathes in. He cannot breathe. He just flat out cannot breathe because of allergies. He doesn't have asthma, but he does have allergies that are so significant that they're literally killing him, you know, to the point where he needs a CPAP machine. 
so basically, my dad can't inhale anything without being allergic to it. Me, I can't eat or drink anything without being allergic to it. To this, at this point, I'm literally having to drink specific types of water because of allergies. I'm actually allergic to the tap water. So, yeah. So anyway, uh, this has hit the 25 minute mark. I need to cut it off. So, yeah, there we go. Uh, and now I'll continue this in part two. And uh, I apologize for it being rambly. Uh, I'm very tired. I haven't had hardly any sleep. And this is totally unscripted. So my apologies. And there you go. Sorry. Bye.